guys. Glad to see everybody safe. Y'all pray for my wife. She's driving, uh, taking my dad's little car that she had come down here. Uh, uh, kind of what an unplanned trip. And so she's driving it back. Got in it this evening about an hour ago, and the air conditioner's not working. Oh. <laughs> miserable. How do you spell miserable? Yeah, hallelujah. She called me. She said, even the passenger window doesn't roll down. <laughs> hallelujah. You know, the way we suffer for Jesus, huh? Amen. Stand to your feet tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you guys for coming out. We're on this Memorial weekend. Praise God. I love holidays, just not on Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. I'm glad people get a chance to get away. My wife and I were supposed to be gone, but I'm glad I was here this morning. Good word this morning, my brother. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to bless this, uh, this, this meeting tonight. Lord, this is a meeting where we come to meet with you, not just coming to mark time on a Sunday night because we couldn't find something better to do. <laughs> Lord, we're here to meet with heaven, to talk to God. Lord, to let you... Lord, challenge us to change. And Father God, tonight I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, just show up in a big way tonight, Lord. We need you. We need your presence. We need you, Lord, just to come in and have your perfect will and way. So Father, we just ask you tonight to bless this service, anoint the word. God, your word's already anointed, but anoint our brother to preach it. Anoint, Lord, us as we worship. And Lord, we're going to be careful to give you thanks, praise, and glory for it. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. This is going to be fun. Uh, I, I was cutting trees all weekend uh, up at the ranch, and, and uh, you, you cut these oak trees, you've got to put that uh, pruning spray on it, keep the bugs out. Well, my good glasses have got now this tar all over them, and I hadn't had a chance to clean them yet, and so these things have got, don't have the middle ground. It's bifocals or it's long distance, and so if you... If I miss this, you just keep singing like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> You're ready. We got. I'm, turn if you if you want if you got a songbook, which most of you guys that are older you don't need these uh, songbooks, but we'll do this. What a fellowship! What a joy divine leading on the everlasting heart. What a blessedness, what a peace is my leading on the everlasting God. I'm leading, leading, safe and secure from all along. Leading, leading, leading on the everlasting Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way, leading on the everlasting arm. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leading on the everlasting arm. I'm leading, leading, safe and secure from all. everlasting God. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leading on the everlasting God. I have blessed me with my Lord so dear. Leading on the everlasting God. I'm From all along, leading, leading, leading on the everlasting arm. Yes, I'm leading, leading, safe and secure from all along, leading, leading, leading on the everlasting oh y'all sound good there tonight amen now this is one of my favorite ones here 
from back in the day. We used to sing this, and I get glory. I get all excited about the rapture. Let me see. Let me pick this up. There you go. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that He always kept His word. Oh, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And with white-robed angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. Oh, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fear not but God's angry frown. Heaven's open, and I saw that the name, woo! Yeah! Oh, there's a new name. Written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine. And with white robed angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. Oh there's a new name, written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. <laughs> it the book was written, saved by grace, oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the blood I am made whole. Oh, there's a new name. Written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine. And with white robed angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. Oh there's a new name, written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless him tonight. Glory to God. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that my name's written down tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Can I sing that now? We'll sing it, out. We'll sing it later too. This may be too high. We'll try. Well, years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden so found liberty at Calvary hallelujah <laughs> by God's word I, I learned then I trembled at the law I'd spurn till my guilty soul in glory turned to Calvary Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There, my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There, my burden soul found me. 
liberty at Cal Come on. Hallelujah. Well, mercy there was great and grace was I skipped that third verse, but I want to sing it anyway. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now he has my key. Now my raptured soul can only sing at Calvary. Come on, somebody give the Lord a clap offering tonight. I was already headed for the book when Pat uh, came and said I, he wanted to sing that song. And I looked at that and looked right across the page. I'm like, man, there's, there's some old stuff I hadn't heard, I hadn't sang in many, many a day. Hallelujah. I, let me get my capo. I don't, I don't need my capo. There's nobody here that's singing. If I can figure this out. As I said this morning, this song that we uh, we sang, <laughs> it was such a. Tammy and I were driving in and just singing this with a, with Tasha Cobb. I can't get the tune of it now. I tell you what, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I still got Calvary going over in my mind. I at least to finally untrack that song. I've been singing it. I, I took a nap today. I was singing it in my sleep. Amen. He knows my name. Aren't you glad he knows our name today? Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for an opportunity just to worship you. Now, Master, I thank you for, for just your anointing to rest on the man of God and let that word take root in our hearts and bear great fruit, Lord, is our prayer tonight. In Jesus' name. Why don't you give the Lord and Pat Garrett a good hand as he comes to bless us tonight. Yeah, I wish I could grow up. Use this microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Oh, I don't care, Jerry. Whatever, buddy. Thank you, Lord. Good. I've got some dear friends here tonight. Brother Willie Mills, his wife, Melinda. Where's little Philip? And little Philip. Good to have you here, Brother Mills. Brother Mills, let, let me preach for him when I was I didn't figure I could preach a lick. Brother Mills let me preach. We put the tent up. I had a tent, and we got the area ministers to come and, and get under that tent. Boy, we was having church. And the night Brother Mills preached, I said, y'all got a good thing going tonight. Pat Garrett and Willie the Kid. Amen. <laughs> I said, the glory of God's going to be manifested in this place tonight, and it did, didn't it, Brother Mills? How, won't y'all lift your hands one more time? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, worship the name above all names. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That you're alive tonight. You're living within us. To the glory of God the Father. By the power of your spirit. God, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your presence this morning. But we thank you for the presence of God tonight. Come on, church. There's a reality here tonight. My God, the King of glory has walked into this house again. He's enveloped the praises of your worship. Hallelujah to God. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Let your King come. And let the kingdom of that King Fill our souls tonight in Jesus' name. Well, there wasn't no burden to preach. You know, Brother brother Dubose, he plows pretty good, doesn't he? I kind of had a conflict with one of our dear saints, and Brother, you know, brother Brad kind of touched me and got me back in the spirit. <laughs> I did told her, I said, forgive me that the I was angry, but what I told you, I meant every word. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. We can't leave this book, church. I, I said, this, this was given to us by God. All, holy men, the Bible says, spoke as they were moved or breathed upon by the word of God. Amen. Uh, it, th some people I saw, told you this morning believe that, that that preaching is foolishness. But if you believe tonight, it's not foolishness. It's the power of God. Can you say amen? 
Glory to God. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 5 tonight. And if you'll let me, I'm going to read the whole chapter. You know, Brother Brad does that. Y'all don't. Y'all ain't fired him, so praise God. This gets a little bit loud, brother. You can put, you know. I'm going to begin at verse 1 of Romans chapter 5. But my text will be the 21st verse of that chapter. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Sometimes I scratch my head about that, but we need to glory in those, the Bible says. Amen. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You ever paid for patience? You better be full of God. That's all I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. Experience and experience hope. Hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which he has given unto us. For we were without, for we, for scarcely, I'll get it out, for we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, yes, he still allowed him to nail him to that cross. My God, my God. Much more being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we when were, were enemies, We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Amen. Much more being reconciled, we we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join the Lord through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, by as one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the multitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, talking about Jesus. But not only not as an offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, my God, much more, through the grace of God and the gift of Christ, which is us by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. It's it's in his heart that all be saved and not one person perish and go to hell. If you go to hell, it'll be against everything that God has done through his son Jesus. Amen. Whether it be unbelief or whatever, you've been hurt in the church. Well, get well, my God, and stay in the church and run the race and receive the prize. Praise God. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more are they that received abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man disobedience many were made sinners, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but wherein, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you thank him for this word of God again tonight, just in your own way? Father, we thank you for the word of God. My God, my God, make it the pen of the ready writer tonight. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for that ghost that's been shed abroad our hearts by the power of your spirit, Lord. Talk to us tonight, dear God. Oh, my God, may our hearts be good ground tonight, Jesus. We might receive unction from the Holy One. All the children said amen and amen. Amen. Now, it's by grace through faith we're saved, and that not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. But if I don't have faith, I can't receive the grace. It's impossible. Our salvation comes as a gift of God's grace, but it can only be accomplished by the human response to faith. All those, amen, that come to him must believe that he still is 
and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I've got a hope tonight. Somebody shout out of this world because of Christ and the scriptures. Amen. And we have to understand as the people of God, this, these two words, faith and grace. We are saved by faith because of his grace. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't think I'm kin to Abraham, but through Christ I am. The lineage, amen, and the covenants that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But through Christ, I am kin to him. Yeah. We were a people who were not a people. But now, through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. we become a people under the Lord. Hallelujah. We're the true Israelite. We've been circumcised in, in our fleshly hearts, amen, and given the precious promises of God yeah. that we can walk in that grace and faith that he's given. Yes, faith in Jesus is the only condition God requires for salvation or anything that he's given to us. You have to have faith to receive that. Matthew 16 and 24. Jesus said if any man will come after me. Let him deny himself. Take his cross up and follow him. Now the cross has always been a symbol of suffering. Death, shame, ridicule, rejection and self denial. I assure you Jesus went through every one of those things. As they nailed him or as he allowed those people to nail him to that cross. We deny ourselves. We commit to three areas of struggle, and namely, we suffer in a long line battle against sin. I, we suffer, amen, and we battle against sin in our only lives because of this fleshly coat on the outside of us. The inside man is fine if Christ is there. We suffer war against Satan and the powers of darkness as we advance the kingdom of God. We suffer the reproach, hatred, and ridicule of that world over there that hates God and hates you and I because God's in us and loves us. Amen. Now, Matthew, or Luke 9 and 24 says, Whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Save it. Yeah. To lose our life, then I must find life. If I'm dead, then something else got to live in me. Amen, according to the scriptures. I said it this morning. Death always precedes resurrection. Come on. Yes. Amen. And to find life is to live in the, in the will of God by his word and principles basing our lives uh, uh, and teachings on the word of God. You know, today the word of God is played down. If you don't know the word of God, you better not watch them television programs. My God, you'll end up like a termite in a yo-yo. You don't know where you're going. Yes, but I'll guarantee you, if you've hid that book in your heart and you've memorized that Bible, I mean the translation that you need to that God spoke, you're going to be fine. Can you say amen? John 10 and 27, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of their hand. Now you can give up if you want to. That's right. I said it this morning, Pastor. We, 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 we make choices every day we live. Yes, sir. Amen. What I, to lose our life and find life is to live God's will. My sheep hear my voice. And we follow Jesus and, he, and hear and follow or in the present tense and denotes a habitual thing. Not just when you want to or if you wake up, amen, feeling like it. It's an everyday occurrence. I've got to follow God every day that I live. Faith in its conception includes four main elements. Faith means firmly believing and trusting in Christ, crucified and risen. You know, if he's still in that tomb, we're in trouble. Yeah. Come on, man. Paul wrote a whole chapter in Corinthians about that. Yeah. What do you mean? You don't believe Christ raised from the dead? Well, what about your dead? Hey, if he's not raised, then me and you're not going to be raised. But I assure you tonight, he's living. He's raised. He's yes, not sir. in the tomb anymore. Yes, I know that because that Holy Ghost is in me tonight. And he said, when I get back there, I'm going to send him back. So I know he made it. Yes, sir. I know he made the trip because of that Holy Spirit right. that was poured out on the 120th right. yes. the day of Pentecost. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. Philip tells the eunuch, what are you, you know what you're reading in that book? Acts chapter 8. Well, I, I, I'm not sure. So Peter, I mean, uh, Philip, thank you, Pastor, begins to preach Jesus. Yes. And he says, I want to be baptized. He said, you can if you believe everything. You believe everything in your heart about it. You can be baptized. And then and only then, Peter, or Philip, I'm going to get Peter back in there somewhere. Thank you, thank you. Amen. <laughs> he baptized him. He said, if you can believe, yeah. then, then, you, then he baptized him. Amen. Now, uh, I think an indictment against the church, we 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 putting a lot of sinners in that water. Come on, man. And if you're not born again, when you get in that baptism, you're going to come up a wet sinner. Yeah. 
You have to be born again. <clears throat> that, that is a doctrine of the church. What is it? Water baptism and communion or the ordinances of the church. But if I get in there a sinner, and I don't care how long Brad holds me under, when I get up, I'm still going to be a sinner. He can hold you till you bubble, but you got to be born again to follow him in baptism. Amen. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It is, it is you and I or anyone, it's you and I yielding, amen, up our wills and committing our total selves to Jesus as revealed in the New Testament. Faith involves repentance. I have to do that sometimes. Don't shout me down, I'm preaching good, Mom. Turning from sin with true sorrow. Now you can be sorrow for your sin, but until you repent of it, you're still in your sin. Yeah. Amen. Second Corinthians 7, 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but sorrow of the world worketh death. <clears throat> As we turn to God through Christ in repentance, it's turned to salvation, born again by His Spirit. Saving faith is always a repentive faith. John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness saying, Repent ye for the kingdom of God is at hand. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Yeah. Faith includes obedience to Christ's word. Maybe we got that on a low shelf, but it ought to be on one of the high shelves of the volumes, amen, of your books. His word must direct our path by his word as the way inspired by God and by faith of our gratitude to God and by the regenerating power and the washing of the Holy Spirit himself, he cleanses us and makes us an active citizen in the kingdom of God. John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered and said, Absolutely, absolutely, I say unto you, if you're not born again, you cannot enter the, you can't even see the kingdom, much less enter that kingdom. It's, you know I had some of this in them others this morning. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. It's an obedience of faith. Remember, faith and obedience are inseparably joined. Amen. Together. I always like Brother Clinton talking about them match mules. Amen. Faith and obedience are two match mules pulling your Holy Ghost wagon, sir. Amen. Saving faith without commitment is, it, to sanctification is Ill, Ill, illegitimate and impossible. Faith includes a breastplate, a heartfelt breastplate of devotion, attachment to Jesus. It is the expression of trust, love, gratitude, and loyalty toward him and to him. It is faith in an ultimate sense and cannot be properly separated from love. We have to love Jesus and we have to love one another. I didn't say it's going to be easiest, but we got to love each other. <laughs> Look at the great commandment. Jesus said to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and and. And I believe that covered everything we are. I believe it covered sp spirit, body, and soul in those statements. Then he said, the first, that's the first and great one. But then the next one's like unto it, they shall love your neighbor as thyself. And he said, on these two statements hang all the law of the prophets. Yes, 21st chapter of John, Jesus asked this question, Simon, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Simon, lovest thou me? Simon, Jonas, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Simon, do you love me? And Peter got kind of upset. He said, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Paul told this to the Ephesian church. Servants, serve them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear, with trembling and singleness of heart as unto Christ. Not with eyes as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Now, he, Jesus uses agape to, when he's talking to Peter. The love, the Christ love, means the intelligent, the purpose, purposeful love, primary of the mind and will. And Peter asks, answers him in phileo. Yeah. It involves warm natural affection of emotion, a more personal and feeling of love that's found within the church. Jesus, through these two, two words, indicate that Peter's love must not only be of the will, but of the heart also. We must have a personal, heartfelt love and devotion for Jesus and each other. Amen. We've got to have that. Simon, feed my sheep implies three things. We need continual pastoral care. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Willie. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Brad Dubose, for the call of the pastor. I need that pastoral covering. I need that care that Brother Brad gives me. We need to feed constantly upon the Word of God. Pastor can't do that for y'all. I can't do that for you. That's something of an individual responsibility that I have to do myself. 
Sheep sometimes wander into danger. Hallelujah. So we need repeated guidance, protection, and correction, not only with the fivefold ministry, but by the Spirit of God Himself. What Jesus is saying, love for Him qualifies the believers for service. Love for Christ and for others is indispensable in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior is an act of a simple moment or a single moment, and a continually attitude for life must grow and strengthen daily. John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to them gave him the power of God that they might believe on his name. John doesn't use the word or the noun belief. He says believe. Amen. It's a verb. John is saying that saving faith is an activity, something that one does, not just a static belief. A saving faith is both the act of a single moment and an attitude of life. The verb believe is a present active participle. Thank you. Indicating the need of perseverance in believing all the way to the end. See, I said it this morning. We're running the race, but we've got to finish it. And, and it ain't up to pastor to drag me and you into heaven. <laughs> God wished it was so. Yeah. But I have to run it myself. Amen. See, the action of faith saves. The activity of true faith must continue after the initial act of accepting Christ is accomplished. We run and then we finish our course. Remember, faith without works is just as dead as last year's corn. Now, we, let me say this. You've heard it a thousand times. We're not working to be saved. We're working because we're saved. That's the simplest thing I've ever heard. Paul said it's a faith that works, and it works by love. It works by love. If we love him, we keep his commandments. Abraham, therefore, is a, a faith that it might be by his grace. You and I are justified the same way that Abraham was justified. It imputed unto him the righteousness of God. How are you righteous? It's only in Christ. When you're in Christ, the righteousness of God is automatic. Amen. What the end of the Lord could not do for it, Faith and grace did because Christ died for my sin and was raised again for my justification. Without faith, it's impossible to please, receive, obey any of the things of God. It's the concepts and the character of God that must be manifested through the church. God has revealed himself as a God of grace and mercy. I'm glad of that. He has also, he had always will manifest love to his people, not because we deserve it, Amen, but because he promised that to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Go to the sixth chapter of Exodus and read that about, we talked about it in prime timer, Sister Liz, about those four things, those four cups that are given during the Passover suppers. He said, I will bring you into the land concerning the, the which I swear to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto it. Why? Amen. Moses, for anguish of spirit and cried bond and cruel bonded. I'm telling you, you might be in the valley tonight, but it's not a stopping place, church. Come on. You're coming out. There's somebody going to get down to your Egypt, my God, and show you the way to get out of there. What this is saying is that God didn't bring them out of Egypt because they had great faith. It's because of his faithfulness. Somebody ought to shout a little then. No, no, it was because of God's grace and his faithfulness to his promise. In other words, God delivered them by grace through faith, his faithfulness. It tells us more about the Passover and the atonement. The Passover, if, I, if, if Strong's is right, says it's a jump past, to pass by or to spare. Amen. If we was in Egypt tonight and that death angel is coming through that street, there better be blood on that lintel and that, and that, and that threshold. Come on. Or that death angel is going to, it didn't make no difference if you're a Jew or Gentile. The blood had to be a pride. And he passed over because he saw the blood. God was preparing to teach them of the blood sacrifice of God's Lamb of God who would come centuries later and would take away the sin of the world. The atonement. I, I suppose we make atonement every day on the finished work that Jesus did. It to, it's to cover by ransom. Jesus died for our sins. Is that correct? He played the ransom. Death was the penalty of man's sin. Amen. This ritual was a solemn assembly, a day of fasting and prayer and humility. This rite symbolizes the work of the Lord. Jesus had pointed to a day that he would take away permanently all confessed sin. I've got to confess my sin. What do you say all the time? If we'll confess our sin, he's faithful and just to do what? Forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Yes, Thank you, Lord. East and the West. That's how far they're getting today. Amen. 
if you confessed him. Amen. Because he's faithful and just to do so. God can't lie. Well, thank you for shouting. They shouted when I said I was going on vacation. The whole movement of the Christian life from beginning to end is dependent on the grace of God. God has given a measure of faith and grace as a, as a gift to unbelievers as well in order to bring them to repentance and to the cross. Corinthians 1 and 4 says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. That's a Pentecostal church. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Amen. Titus 3 and 4. I don't never go to Titus much, but I, I read in the margin of my Bible, Titus, in them two scriptures. But after that, the kindness of love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared. He did this before there was anything. Before the foundations of anything in this world that we know of, Christ said, I'm going to go to that cross and I'm going to redeem those people. Amen. I'm the last Adam. I'm the last one. I'm the Savior. And I'm going to bring back what that first Adam lost. Amen. It's his unmerited favor, the undeserved favor. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 and 22. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Free from sin, to will and do of his good pleasure. We're free to worship, free to praise, free to please, praise, and free to <laughs> praise God. Amen. Amen. His grace includes uh, obedience, prayer, to grow in Christ and witness for him. God's grace must be diligently sought after. It ought to be a top priority. Let us therefore come boldly, Paul told Hebrews, now you know Brother Smart said, Luke said, wrote Hebrews. But we're not going to have no fist fight, but I thought Paul wrote it. Hebrews 4 and 16, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Sometimes we need help. Thank God there's, that altar's open in heaven, amen? His way must become our way by study, by obedience, to the holy word of God. Jesus said in John 15 that he was the true vine and we were the branches. Now, we were wild olive trees, the Bible. Paul said this. But he broke out of that good olive tree and engrafted those wild ones into it. You see, into that good olive tree, the wild olive tree will become good because we're engrafted into it. You know that pecan tree that we got over there? It had to be grafted to bring forth those pecans that Myrtle likes. She likes me to go pick them up. And I said, oh, I got something better, way better to do than pick up pecan. You knock yourself out. Engrafted. Amen. We were wild trees, but now we're the trees of his planting, the Bible says. 2 Timothy 3 and 15, as a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which makes you wise unto salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus. Hearing the gospel, faith comes by hearing, but if we're just hearing it and not doing it, we're, not, we're in trouble. You've you got to be doers. Jesus in the 24th chapter of Luke, verse 47, that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in, the, in, the name, in his name among nations beginning at Jerusalem. And then we have to get power to do this, right? Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what you preach, then by the power of the Holy Spirit, he will confirm. There will be confirmation. Paul said he was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew and also to the Greek. Covered us both. Paul again to the Corinthians. Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not in man's wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ shall be made of none effect. He that, he, he that said the preaching of the cross, amen, was power, was those that believe. Sought by prayer, June 20th, June 20th. But you, beloved, building up yourself, praying on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, this is just me. I don't like them saying, all right, let's, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Because we're not the giver of the Holy Spirit. We're not the initiator of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know my language. Because I, I do it a lot because that's what I first received. Yeah. We know that. But if I'm doing that in my flesh and not by the Holy Spirit, that's dangerous. I mean, we need to be imitators, amen. 
But I'm sure that, that, that spirit's going to give you the unction. Come on, church. It, it, it takes me a while, but I'll, if I keep praying, that Holy Ghost is going to come upon me. And that utterance is going to come. Somebody shout amen. It might be Chinese. It might be some other kind of language. I don't know. But he knows. Come on, church. It might not profit me, amen, that I'm knowing what I'm saying. But if I'm praying that Holy Ghost, the whole will of God is being done, my God, in this earth and in the church. Hallelujah. If we're praying in that Holy Ghost or allowing him to pray through us. I know I'm dry, but. We'll go eat in a minute. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Building ourselves up. Fasting. You know, I, I, I tell y'all that when I first got saved, Willie's daddy, Brother Mills' daddy, Brother Sister Mills pastored over at Clute. He said, you know, Brother Garrett, if you uh, start your fast on Tuesday night and break your fast on Wednesday, you fast 52 days out of the year. Yeah, I've told you that, Pastor. Yeah. Then why don't we do it? <laughs> then why don't we do it? Jesus, listen to me. Fasting doesn't, fasting doesn't change God a bit. No, he's God. He's always been God. But it'll change me. Yes, and, and, the, and the sad thing I thought about reading, Jesus had fasted 40 days. 40, 40 days. He ain't drunk no water. He ain't eat nothing. And now he's finished. And here comes the stinking devil. Here the stinking devil comes. And the devil's a sorry devil. He said, why don't you turn these stones into some food? You ain't ate nothing in 40 days. I wish Jesus would have just knocked. <laughs> what did he do? He, he took did. that sword out, mister. He and he stuck him with the word of God. Somebody shout amen. Yeah. Once you get up on this temple and cancel yourself off, amen, Jesus hit him with the word of God. That's why it's important to know scriptures. Yes. That young lady this morning, bless her little heart, she, she went through a terrible life. I, I guess I've been protected all my life. I, nothing really bad ever happened to us, even, even now. But bless her little old heart. She started telling me, and I said, well, you need to cast that off on Jesus. Bless your heart. I said, you can't carry that. I said, you, 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 you lifted your hand for salvation. Well, if you're saved, that's gone. Don't, and I said, what you must remember, the devil is a liar. And I said, he's not going to come to you and tell you how sweet you are and how good you're doing in the church. He's going to come and, and mess with you in your head and lie. There'll be an imp on each of your shoulders telling what a sorry individual you are. When he gets on my shoulders, he can say amen. Come on. But I don't listen to him. Yeah. And if there is conviction, not condemnation, I repent. Yeah. I guess y'all are enjoying this. That's Bless good. your heart. You, I good. just kind of feel like I'm stuck in the mud. I'm glad I'm stuck on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Continually filled with the Spirit. And when you pray, Jesus said, I believe this is a secret to all prayer. Get in that closet, shut the door, and pray in secret. He that sees in secret will open you or, or, or talk to you openly, shall reward you openly. Continually filled with the Spirit. You know, when I first started. In that tent, Brother Shambach had a double portion service. He had a big old thing of oil, Jerry. Well, you know, I said, I'm going to jump on that bandwagon. And what's that brother in New Orleans? Great man of God. Uh, who? No, 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 no. Marvin. Yeah, Marvin. Yeah. You know, he always put that overcoat on Willie. I said, i got to get me one of them. <laughs> I'm just telling you I mean he'd walk by people and they'd turn to flip I said I'm getting me one of them too <laughs> you, you know I, I was sincere but I was sincerely wrong Come on, yeah. yeah. hello I, I wanted to see the power of God yeah. but it didn't come for amen uh, activities or acting it, it oh, comes God. from the power of God yeah. come on church yeah. finally I got enough sense to get in an altar somebody shout yeah. amen and that thing started flowing hallelujah yeah. to God I always prayed to him to slip my, his hand under my hand. And he'd do it too. Because he loves you. That devil hates you, but Jesus loves you. He loves you, loves you, loves you. I told Kent one time, I said, he don't have hardly no problem counting hairs on your head. I just figured I'd throw that in there because Kent, Kent, Kent will get on to me. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, you saw the dam come up or the dern. We don't want to cuss in church. And you know, we need to worship God. And sometimes we'll get in a, in a valley and we'll forget to worship him. You know, you know, he's there. I believe he's there. If he led, if he's leading and guiding us and we're in that valley, he put us there. But oh, don't let the, the lips of worship, the, the, the sacrifice of praise be shut down because of what you're going through. My God, if we got enough strength to lift our hands and open our mouth and begin to magnify his name, he's coming, church. He's coming with the answer. I don't know if it's tonight or tomorrow. Tears might endure for a night, but I'm telling you, there's still a joy that comes in the morning. Somebody ought to shout, amen. Singing with grace in your hearts. Don't be drunk. You know, people's left this church because pastor, amen, got on to them about drinking. Yeah. That wasn't no religious spirit. That was sin. I need to forget that, amen, but I, I just come out, I, amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wait and drink that fourth cup with him. Come on. Yeah, he is holding that fourth cup, that cup of consummation. And he said, I'm not going to drink it with you boys here, but I will drink it up there. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And I believe that's pretty quick, church. I believe old, old, old Gabe's fixing to blow that trumpet, <laughs> I believe it's going to blow so loud the dead. Brother and Sister Mills are going to hear it, Brother Willie. And they're going to come forth. Everyone that hears that, come on, church. That's not the second death. That's the first resurrection. Praise God forever. God's grace can be resisted, though. The Holy Spirit can be grieved and vexed. I know of only one sin that won't be forgiven in this life or the one to come. And that's to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Poor little Don, I love Don. Uh, what was Don's last name, Pastor? Uh, your associate? Hickman. I, I love you. I'm just getting just like you, ain't I? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I remember them names. Amen. But he preached on the baptism, uh, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it was like this. It was dead. I mean, the rocket ship wouldn't even take off, much less land. But it's in the Bible. Now, Brother Smart, and he's a, you know him. A little wild man, I preached a bunch for him. He told me, I said, well, what's that mean? I said, I, said, I th thought it was attributing the works of God to the work of the devil. Oh, no, no, you're missing it. You're missing that. Little theologian. I said, well, what is it, Brother Albert? He said, that Holy Spirit is still the convictor. And if you keep hardening your heart and you keep rejecting that Holy Spirit, one day he's going to fold the deck up, mister. And he's going to be through with you. And he'll never come again. Oh, my God. Come on. That ought to shake us. Yes, Amen. When he comes, he won't ever speak louder. But that first time, give me yes, five, sir. big guy. Amen. When he speaks, let's obey him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And grieve not the spirit whereby we've sealed under the great redemption of God. Amen. I'm a hurrying. One guy said, this is the last page. People started clapping. Glory to God. See, we'll be defiled. I don't want to be defiled. I want to be right with God. I might have missed something. Let me go back. Oh, me. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Looking digitally, lest any man fall to the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You, you can get that spirit of bitterness. You can get in that cave and get mad. Come on, somebody shout. Man, I wish pastor had quit preaching so stinking long. I'll get an altar in a minute. And I like what Brother Smart said. He, uh, Brad said, he didn't preach very long. I said, yeah, but he got the same results you did. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of mean-spirited, Brother Brad. I'm sorry. Amen. God's grace may be received in vain. Paul told the Corinthians, we are workers together with him and beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Amen. We are saved then we ought to remain saved, we ought to remain in love with Jesus, and we ought to remain in love with each other. Don't quench the Spirit. God help us, church. We, we need to feel after that Holy Spirit in the altars, in the service, in our daily lives, because he knows where we need to go. Amen. Paul said, and do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Jesus died in vain. When we abound in his faith and grace, 
If we do, Jesus has become of no effect to us anymore. You can still go through the, the religious shenanigans. You still know your prayer language, but you dead as last year's corn, mister. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus has become no effect unto us, you and me. Whosoever you justify, or whosoever of you justified by the law, then we're not under grace. He tore them Galatians up. Y'all are fools. Y'all are foolish. Why have you quit the grace of God, the faith of God, and went back to the works of the law? You never did keep them when you were in the law. Right. Acts 2 and 42. I'm fixing to close. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in prayer and fellowship. That was being uh, adhering to, amen, constantly diligent to what they were preaching. Brother Brad, it's a sad day you and I live in because of that television ministry. Everything that you preach, they're refuting nine times out of ten out there on that television. And I'll watch that mess. And I'll guarantee you it's not a God, sir. Amen. Amen. In the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayer, and God added to that bunch daily, such as be saved. Salvation is receiving God's provision of, of salvation and being made a new creature in Christ. After salvation, we must still obey and follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus is a good song we used to sing. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I'm going to follow. Yes, sir. When we are saved, there is forgiveness of sin, being made spiritually alive and delivered from the power of Satan and sin because we have been made a new creature in Jesus. Romans 6, and I'm going to begin verse 1. I just kind of paraphrased, don't get mad at me. Sam was here, he'd be mad. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, God forbid. God forbid. How can you and I that are dead to sin live any longer in sin? When Jesus died, we died. When Jesus arose from the dead, we were resurrected from the dead. Amen. If we're buried in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing the old man is crucified with him, that sin might be destroyed. Henceforth, we should not serve sin. If we're dead with Christ, we shall live with Christ. See, I, we can't let sin rule in our bodies, our mortal bodies, and obey the lust thereof. We yield our members as instruments of righteousness unto God, not unrighteous. Faith and grace has given you I the, the chance, the opportunity to yield ourselves unto God. How? We're alive from the dead. We're not Dead Sea Scrolls. We're living letters, living epistles of God. And we're yielding our members as instruments of righteousness through Jesus and to Jesus. Thank God sin shall not have no dominion over you. Thank God that I think he told Peter, I love old Peter. We're going to all make it. Peter did. Amen. He told Peter, amen. How many times have I got to forgive this idiot? I mean, God. This, he's, he, he, how many times do I forgive him? 70 times 7. Now, I went to Angleton School, so you all have to help me. But I believe that's 490 times in one day. Well, you can't lose. That's inexhaustible, Brother Brad. We're going to make it. It only repent. You know, I'm hard-headed. Myrtle, bless her little heart. She's getting a lot of gray hairs on there. Thank God they're still on her head, but she's tough living with me. Hello? Yep. Drug her over four or five states for 27, 28 years, but she hung right in there because she loves Jesus. And her mama and Myrtle prayed for me, and we prayed for my daddy. Oh, thank you. And Brother Vernon Willis pastored this church. I don't know if you all remember Brother Willis. And Brother Willis was a good man, a great teacher of the Word of God. I enjoyed sitting under his ministry. But if you needed him, sometimes you couldn't get him, amen. I don't know all the particulars there, but my daddy uh, had a stroke. And he told Mama, he said, baby, I don't know if I'm, I'm right with God. Come on, church, pray. Keep on praying and believe. He said, I don't know if I'm right. Call the church. Brother Willis was here. Came and led my daddy to the Lord. And J.B. gave me enough money to go to Arkansas to preach for his boy in a Pentecostal church of God. But while I was gone, my daddy hit that stroke and he was going to die, Margaret. And I got to that lady's house, my brother David's house. 
And they said, Brother Garrett, your daddy's not expected to live. I only missed three revival meetings. Or I didn't start three revival meetings, but I made it back to all three of them. That was one of them. Over there at Brother Cooker's church where my mother died. And, I, and, and when I had that stinking kidney stone, we're not going there. Dear God, that'll, 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 woo, Jesus, help us. And I got in that bedroom. I was going to go back the same day. And Brother Willie, I was hurt so bad. Because you love your mom and daddy. And I, I just felt so bad. But then that carpenter walked in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, my God, the presence of God filled that place. And he said, Pat, you might not see your daddy now, but you're going to see your daddy again. Come on, church. We ain't lost nothing, my God. Whatever we've committed unto him, he still got it, and he's keeping it, hallelujah. And one day, we're going to see it and see them. Hallelujah to God forever. I went back home. I was driving, I don't know, 80 or 5, 9. I was going. Arkansas State Patrol got behind me and pulled me over. I had a lot of money. I think I had $35 because my truck had something happen to it and I had to get a muffler. I cut that thing out and the boy did it for $5. Thank you, Jesus. In Texas, in Lufkin, pardon me. And he pulled me over. He said, uh, you know how fast you was going? I said, yes, sir. How fast were you going? I said, probably about 90. He said, 89. Where are you going? I said, I'm going back to Texas. Why are you going? I said, come on. My daddy's not expected to live. He pulled in front of me and turned that side. I was out of Arkansas in 30 minutes. I bet we were going 150 miles an hour. <laughs> we got back, buried my daddy. Brother Willis buried my daddy. And uh, Brother Maynard said, uh, here's, here's your ticket to go back to. <laughs> so you can finish that meeting. Come on, church. Yeah. Got to fly on an airplane. I didn't, I didn't like airplanes. <laughs> I'd like to have been like Philip, Brother Mill. Just pick me up and take me wherever you want me to. Hallelujah. <laughs> Cheaper and quicker and faster. Amen. <laughs> Finish that meeting. Bless his heart, little David. Y'all remember little David Maynard, Brother J.B. Maynard? They were in this church. They were founding fathers of this church under Brother Farmer and Brother Leatherwood. As a good man. Brother Leatherwood got sick Brother Mills went over, him and Sister Mary, prayed for Brother Mills. Boy, what a heritage, Willie. What a, what a genealogy you have through those two saints of God. Come on, somebody. Why don't you lift your hands and thank God for those that have paid the way for us. My God, that have fought the fight of faith and has died, amen, in the faith that we love today. Brother Swain, all of those, my God, that loved us and cared enough for us to show us the way by a life, amen, that depicts this great Christ. Glory to God forever. Glory to God forever. Thank God sin shall not have dominion over us. We're, under, we're not under the power and the authority of sin. We're under the power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace of God. Years I spent in vanity and pride, knowing not was crucified, caring not that for me I died, or for he, me he died. You can sing it better than I can. Amen. At Calvary. We still have to have to lead him to that place of the skull, that old place called Golgotha. Come on, church, where Christ was crucified. Hallelujah to God. And the sins of the whole world were placed upon him. Not just a few sins or one sin or the Jews' sin. The sins of the whole world were placed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That beating that he took was the healing of everybody that ever was born into this world. Hello. Yes, sir. He received that for us. He received that volitionarily. He didn't have to do that, church, but he did it because God's love was shed through him to us. And to know him is to love him. Amen. Come on, let's sing that, Brother Brad. I, I, I probably, I've got a bunch more notes, but shoot, this is fine. I felt God in here tonight. I felt him this morning. I, I don't go by what I feel. I believe that we're two or three of together. He promised to be there, so... 
He'll deliver from cigarettes <laughs> and every other thing. Praise God. I love you, Margaret Mills. You know I love you, darling. I used to, I, I guess Margaret won't mind me saying this before Brad comes, but I used to go see Brother Kenneth, and he said, uh, you know, Pat, you've got to pray for Margaret. I said, why? She's smoking cigarettes. I said, Kenneth, i never seen Margaret smoke no cigarettes. I, I smell them. I smell them all. I said, well, I'll pray for her. I said, you want me to cast them, them tobacco devils out of her? Yeah, if you can. Bless her heart. That ain't no, that, ain't, that girl wasn't smoking no cigarettes. Give the Lord a hand clap as Brother Brad comes to lead us in some worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, Thank amen, you, Jesus. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Pat, as you were talking about these great men of God, I... I was thinking about uh, Brother Swain. He, he got, he lived forever just about. He was, I don't know, 90 plus years old. And <clears throat> I went by his house and I'd already buried his wife and, and uh, he was living with one of his granddaughters. And, and he always just, he had this thing, he just wanted to pour into you when you showed up. He just, just sitting there in that, that room they had built in that nice fine house for him and he, he just said, you look at all this. He said, isn't this a beautiful house? Oh, it's beautiful. He said, I'd trade it all if I could be back on, on uh, be back preaching again on the street. <laughs> Come on. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Why don't you stand tonight? By God's word I mean, I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned. Return to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there. Yes, Lord. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. <laughs> now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now so can we sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Sing that again. Hallelujah. Oh, mercy, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to be. There can only sing of Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span on Calvary. Hallelujah! See, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There, so found liberty at Calvary. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. Blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we thank you for Calvary. Don't you? Hallelujah. I know there's got to be another one right here next. That's what I used to like about these old songbooks. 
Amen. There's just always one right there. Well, I don't see one. All right, Will. I don't like that one. <laughs> I'm trying to find something else to go, go along with what you just preached. We're going to quit here in a minute. We're going to quit when we get done. We're not going to sing all live just so we get finished. <laughs> well, I can do that one. There you go. Some, oops, wait, 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 wait. Let me hit that. Some glad morning when this life is o'er high, I'll fly away to a land where I'm fly away. Yes, and I fly away, oh glory. I fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, bye bye. I'll fly away. Oh, now just a few more happy days and then. Yes, fly away, oh, to a land where joys will never end. I'll fly away, yes, and I fly away, oh, glory. I fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, bye bye. Fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, bye bye. I fly away. I said that everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing God's praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers will be singing around that throne in a land where no one ever knows a care. And with Christians of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. I said that everybody will. Are you happy tonight? Over there. We will shout and sing. God's praise, everybody will be happy over there. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number, oh, Lord, when the saints go marching in, and when they dance around God's throne, oh, when they dance around Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number, yes, Lord, when they march around the throne. Amen. You going to finish it? You want me to finish it? Hallelujah. Well, then I'm going to sing one more. <clears throat> this is that one I wrote. I had, I, since we're on this, on this little groove, I hadn't done this in a while. Let me see if I can remember. Well, I said, Lord, Lord, you've been so good to me. I said, Lord, Lord, you've been so good to me. Has he been good to you? I was lost and bound by sin. Your love found me and drew me right in. I said, Lord, you've been so good to me. I said, Lord, Lord, you've been so good to me. Yes, you have. Ooh, I said, Lord, Lord, you've been so good to me. Sent your son to Calvary, and there he died on that old rugged tree. I said, Lord, my God, you've been so good to me. Woo. Lord, I love you. You are the most 
I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Lord, you saved me, filled me with power. Come in and preach this very hour. I said, Lord, Lord, you've been so good to me. <laughs> Ooh, I said, Lord, Lord, you've been so good to me. <laughs> Now I have joy, wonderful peace within Ever since I let the Savior come in I said, Lord Come on, you remember that? I said, Lord I said, Lord Lord, 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 Lord You've been so good to me <laughs> How many of you glad you saved tonight? Glory to God, glory to God. Grab your neighbor's hand. Father, I just ask right now that you let the, just the joy of our salvation, that Father God, tonight, Lord, we draw waters from these wells of salvation with joy. That Lord, uh, this, this walk in Jesus Christ is not a burden. Lord, we're not just barely holding on. But God, we're going on, going on toward the mark, toward our goal. So many lives depend on what we do. God, I thank you for the strength that you've given us to go on for you. Lord, bless this word that Brother Pat's brought to us today. Lord, may Jesus real. Father God, let us go out of here tonight, Lord, knowing what you've done in us, what you desire to do, to do in us, through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray it. Everybody said amen. I don't have false teeth, but I almost lost them anyway right there. God bless you. Shake, shake hands. Amen. Greet one another. Y'all be safe tomorrow. And we'll, uh, we will not have prayer meeting here tomorrow night. No prayer meeting tomorrow night. We'll be back on Wednesday. Uh -huh.